my name is Kenny. I'm one of the pastors here. Um, I've been away for two weeks, and hence I'm coming back uh, this week. So I haven't seen you all for a while. Hope we all have a really good uh, holiday. And um, so this morning, we will be looking at the book of Revelation. We will be on, ch- on to the chapter, Revelation chapter 5. And uh, according to Gordon, the secret to a long life is to breathe regularly. <laughs> I think that's very biological. Uh, live hopefully and positively. I think that is a bit attitudinal. Um, but above all, trust in the Lord. I think that's very spiritual. That's very true. Above all, trust in the Lord. That's very really important. And we know he has gone through economic downturns, uh, two wars, and the pandemic. And he's still living his life in his fullness with joy and happiness. I think that is a wonderful example to show us how our faith in the Lord will help us power through different years, different life stages in our life. And without doubt, um, presumably, uh, Gordon will be one of those people you will have thought he will be closer than many people entering into the heaven in the future. And it's a blessing uh, to be able to have that uh, reassurance. And um, this morning, as we continue the series of Revelation chapter 5, the whole book of Revelation uh, is quite about the end time, what actually happened in the end time. And um, it, it was revealed to John uh, to, towards the end uh, of his life, and it is the last book in the uh, Bible, but it's not the last book written in the Bible. And uh, this is how the book begins. So that revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, that's John, what must soon take place. Now, when you look at this part and you wonder, you can have a different position how you understand the book of Revelation. Um, But we are now really in year 2023, and not everything uh, in that Revelation has happened. And you wonder, well, why the book, why the Revelation to John said, well, what must soon take place? So they are showing something to the Apostle John and say to him, whatever you see now, it will soon take place. But not all of them has taken place. It's not that soon. And obviously, he won't know that because he's already in the grave. He didn't know a lot of things didn't actually happen, but it's yet to happen. Um, And that makes me wonder, well, the new heaven and the new earth has not come. The world that we are living in is still a lot of evil doings and beings there. There's a lot of things bad happening. So what is the purpose of that book then when it says what must soon take place will take place? So it still hasn't taken place, a lot of things. And I wonder, so what is the purpose of the book of Revelation? And I think the reasons why there were revelation from God to the Apostle John was to bring hope to him, was to help him during his suffering. He was in prison. He needs to have trust in the Lord. And I think that's the purpose of the book of Revelation. It's not quite about the timing of those end time events happening. It's more about those things was revealed to John so he can have hope and strength and faith when he's going through his suffering. Now we all make statement of faith. But that is basically a statement of faith. We all make statements of faith to people when we talk to people. If you think about, for example, pregnancy, right? we know morning sickness doesn't only happen in the morning, right? So your, someone may tell you, or your friends or your relatives may tell you, oh, well, around week 12, uh, things get settled, you won't feel much. And then by week 12, you're still feeling it. And your husband may be telling you, oh, well, my mom has it until week 20. But there you go. And then by week 20, you still have it. And then your mom may tell you, well, while I was carrying you, it was around week 30. Now, by the time you reach week 30, you go to see a doctor. And the doctor says to you, well, for a lot of women, uh, it's usually carried all the way to birth. So that practically makes everyone a liar in your life. <laughs> so what happens is everyone is telling you what they know it will happen, what they hope it will happen to you. 
is that sickness will be gone eventually, but no one actually can pin down on 12 weeks, 9 days, it will be gone. No one can ever tell you about that. But everyone is telling you what will happen. You just no one knows the time. They're going by their own experience, they're probably going by their knowledge, but unfortunately, when it happens to you, nothing applies to you. That's how the work works. Now, it was revealed to John, the apostle, when he was in prison. He probably think he would never got out of jail from that point onward. He probably think there's a very good chance he will pass away in jail. The future is very unknown. But God reveals that to him in the midst of his suffering so he can have hope. He can have something to hang on to. God is telling him, ultimately, what you see in the vision is showing you the ultimate victory of God over death, over the evil, over everything. So John was in jail because he was preaching the gospel. He was preaching about Jesus. That's why he was in the jail. Now, in John's time, uh, even in the late first century, there wasn't a lot of widespread persecution of Christians. Um, it was very local, very sporadic. Uh, it's not consistent. It really depends on where you live. You may be persecuted or you may not. It also depends on what you actually do with your faith. So it's not much different from us in our world. You've got some parts of the world Christians will be protected. You've got some part of the world Christian will be persecuted. And certainly some part of the world, uh, we are on the verge if you believe in Jesus. But it was in that context, God revealed what future will be like, what the end time will be like to the Apostle John to give him hope so he can hang on to Jesus, so he can have faith to go through whatever he's going through. So let's have a look what actually has been shown to him. So at the beginning of the vision, there is a scroll there pending to open, and there was a question tossing around for who is worthy to break the seals of the scroll. Now, a scroll in those days is basically a book, so they open the book by rolling it out. They don't swipe in those days. They don't have anything to swipe. They roll to open. And uh, the book is sealed with seven seals. It means it has not been tampered. It has never been opened, the book. It's like when you buy new electronics, the boss needs to have a seal to get your warranty. If the seal is open, you can't return the product. That's what it means. The book is completely sealed, never tampered. Now, and then, they are asking, well, who is worthy to open the book? But no one in heaven or the earth can open it. And then here it comes, John the Apostle cried, wept and wept. And you wonder, well, why, why is the rush to actually open the scroll? Why is he crying? Why can't he wait a little bit? The book can wait. If there's no one can open, just wait until the person turns up, then you can open the book. But he was crying because... He was suffering at that time. He was in jail. He probably will die in prison. He doesn't know. But what he knows is when the book opens, um, all the sufferings will be gone. The evil will be demolished. And things will come back in harmony. New heaven and the new earth will come. And these are the things the Bible said what must soon take place at the beginning of the Revelation chapter 1. But these things have not happened, but we have to wait until those scroll open, then it will come. And that's why John feels the rush to see that happen, because he is living in his end time. Now think about this, if you have suffered from injustice, you want justice to come ASAP. If you are in pain, you want comfort to come ASAP. If you're moving towards the end of your life, if death is predictable in your language, you know you will want heaven to come a bit earlier. And I think that's what happened. When John knows no one can actually open the scroll to reveal the end time, to end the suffering, of course he's not thinking about himself only. He's also thinking about those brothers and sisters who are in the same situation as him. He's thinking if the scrolls can be opened, the world will be back in harmony again. Now, through the book of Revelation, you notice it's always image, visual. 
So what John was doing is he saw a scene or a picture, and then he changed it from picture to words. He changed from visual to written, so people can make sense of what he saw. Now, because of him doing that, a lot of things that he has written down is quite open to interpretation. So when someone describes something and change it to words, and then you have to read the words to put it back into picture, you've got to have some discrepancy and a lot of different interpretation. Now you don't always get any verbal direct instructions in Revelation. There are a couple. This is one of those. There is an elder there to say, "Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll to bring the end to the history." And the seven seals can be broken. Now, what the elder is telling John is verbally assure him with certainty, not giving him a picture, but telling him the one who is worthy to open the scroll is right there. And who is that person? That's a lion, the tribe of Judah, and that is what the Jews were expecting. So basically, the elder is telling John the prophecy, the Jewish prophecy, has been fulfilled, and Jesus. Is the one you are waiting for. So, in other words, it's reassuring、uh, the Apostle John. Even though you're suffering, you know the world is in chaos. The Jesus you believe is the one who is the King, who can open the scroll and bring the end to all suffering. So, this is one of the direct sayings you can you can get. So, basically, asking John, do not weep, do not be fearful, hold no fears. Because God is your source of faith, your source of strength, your source of hope in the future. So He will bring justice, healing, and hope to you. So John saw it in vision, not in reality, because it's yet to open. Now, and then you wonder what is this whole scroll is about? But what happens when the seal is actually broken? Then,、um, so if you read on in the Bible, when they open the scroll. When the scroll is actually open, when the seals are broken, it's nothing to do with reading. So when the scrolls open, no one actually read anything. So it's not about literacy, but it's about things happening. So when you open the scrolls,、uh, what happens is you will find people worshiping God in the later chapters, and then you will find the beast Satan got defeated. And then in chapter twelve, believe it or not, you actually find a story of pregnancy as well. That's unbelievable. So as you read on Revelation, as the scrolls opened, it's nothing to do with reading; it's to do with happening. God is actioning things as the scrolls is happening. That means God is unfolding, executing His redemption plan to people on the earth. Now, and then when the elders said to Jesus. Well, we said to the apostle John,、uh, "You see a lion.、Uh, here it comes." John said, "I saw a lamb." Now you wonder what is actually going on. Now, lion is a symbol of strength and victory. It's a、uh, a, a symbol of triumph in the language there. So everyone in those days will understand. So what? The revelation is telling John what God is telling John is in your midst of suffering. While you're in prison, you need to have hope in Jesus. He is the Lion. He is the one that you trust. As the scroll and open and release actions, you see future has more hope and certainty. Ultimately, God will judge the world. However, when you look through Revelation, it's not so much about judging the non-believers. In Revelation, if you read further chapters, you start to find out it's about defeating the evil. It's about bringing back the new heaven and the earth. It's not about judging people who are not believing in Jesus. It's about what God will do to redeem people. And here it comes. There is humorous moment here. So this is a lion which a Jew has been expecting, but John saw a lamb. So what would you say out of it? Well, my conclusion is either one of them. One saw a lion, the other one saw a lamb. They're looking at the same picture. Either one of them need to see an optometrist. That's my conclusion. Now, this is what happened in the book of Revelation. Every image is almost open to interpretation. Even within the book itself, they look at the same thing. They come up with a different image. But this lamb 
is very different from an ordinary lamb. Um, so it has got seven horns, seven eyes, and seven spirits. So the horns is a symbol of strength, might, and that's why um, at the beginning it said the mighty angel, as he, he has got the force, he has got the muscle, but it's not worthy to open the scroll because he hasn't got the identity. He's not the person who is qualified and authorized to open the scroll. So only the lamb has got seven horns, uh, which, is the, which is the symbol of strength, perfect strength. Seven means perfect, so perfect strength. Seven eyes, that means this lamb can see everything in the history. Everything happening under the sun, he can see it. So it's all seeing. And then seven spirit, uh, I'm not quite sure. I couldn't quite work out what that is. So I'll be guessing seven spirits refer to the Holy Spirit, referring, referring to God is an all-knowing God. So God sees everything, God is powerful, and God knows everything. So I think that might be what it means. Now, it is telling um, a very different picture. In the book of Revelation, sometimes the image could be surreal, could be quite unsettling, um, it could be something you just don't see it every day. But what, what they are trying to communicate is Jesus is almighty. Jesus is all-knowing. It's all-seeing. Now, while one person sees Jesus as a lion, the other person may see Jesus as the lamb. But there's no difference in our world. Some people see Jesus inspirational. Some people think Christian is conservative. Some people see Jesus as a saviour. Some people will just try to do everything to stay away from all kinds of faiths. The same things happen in our world. Not everyone sees Jesus as the Savior. But the Apostle John was revealed. Uh, it was revealed to him, God wants him to know what he believes is correct, is true. Jesus is indeed the Savior. The question for us is, what do we actually believe? Do you believe Jesus is Savior? He is the lion and he is the lamb. He is the lamb that has been sacrificed. You know, the lamb is the symbol of weakness and sacrifice. But what it's telling us here is also the source of strength and hope. In the Bible, there are plenty of imagery that is paradoxical. A lamb that was slain, you expect a lamb that has been slain is dead. But he's alive. A lamb is weak but it has got strength. I think what God is telling the Apostle John is in your midst of suffering, the only thing you can hang on to is Jesus and what you believe because he is the source of your strength. And beyond the reality, in the future, even you cannot see it, God is hope. It's your strength. That's what God is telling him. So that is the seven, seven, seven combinations. Now, the book of Revelation is usually classified in the genre of apocalypse. So when you think of the word apocalypse, you will think of um, the end of the world, disaster, massive destructions, all right, the catastrophic scale. So if any movie, any modern movies, if they have the title apocalypse, you will know it usually revolves around the idea of the extinction of human race. Right? It could be to do with a virus, it could be to do with zombies. Okay, it depends on what movie you're watching. But overall, it does give you a picture of gloom and doom. However, apocalypse in Bible term, in the language, is understand as a perfected disclosure of important events. I think that's what God is doing to the Apostle John. He's showing him some of the important events in human history that has not taken place, but it will soon take place for him to see. So he can see how the human history eventually unfold to give him the hope. Eventually, suffering will be gone and everything will be gone. What you're having at the moment, do not be worried. Do not be afraid. Even though life at the moment could not, may not be beautiful, very stressful, even you're in trauma, God is telling John, while you're in prison, do not be worried. Do not be afraid. Leave it with God. Stay calm. Trust in the lion, in the lamb has been slain. It is strong triumph. And it's the lion in the lamb that he needs to believe in. And then, what happened after is, 
Then the, he went over. The lamb went over and took the scroll, and everyone fell down. And then there it was an outburst of praise and worship. So what is happening there is the author John is telling us he's expressing the it is God's will to only have Jesus to be able to be authorized to open the scroll. He's the only one who can be qualified to actually open the scroll. So he's designated official. So the scroll in those days they are a legal document. Only authorized official can actually open the scroll. You, a general person cannot just go and grab it and open it. Now, obviously, when Jesus go and grab the scroll, he didn't get a boot. No one boot him. But they, hooray! This is the God we are waiting for. He is the one that who is worthy to open the scroll. And then there was a run of、um, praise and song singing, and they sang a new song. So let's have a look at the lyric. What they sing. So you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and, we, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and all nation, and you have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. The reasons why Jesus is a worthy Lamb who can open the scroll is He died for us. He died for our sins. God is telling the apostle, "What you believe is the truth. It's true. Jesus is God. The Lamb exercised the power of God to save the world and redeem the world, and the beast exercised the power of Satan to destroy the world and inflict suffering." Now, in the later chapters, as you read on beyond chapter five, you see the evil was overcome, death was overcome, new Jerusalem, the new heaven and the earth has come. And all people from all cultures, all skin color, all hair color, or all pupil color, if you like, or all fingernails color, if you like, God save them. God redeem everyone, and is worthy of our, of our praise. So, what's the take-home message from this revelation to the Apostle John in Revelation chapter five? Well, I think the word from Gordon, who is at the age of one hundred seven, breathe regularly. Live positively and hopefully, and above all, trust in the Lord. For some people, the ending of life is a bit more predictable than other people.、Um, some of them they might even have it as a topic of conversation over their dining table. You never know. But John was in prison, and it was at that time the whole revelations was given to him. He was in the midst of suffering. He thought in prison it might be the last place he would ever go before he died. He probably died in prison at the end. But you can see the picture of John. The picture of loneliness is there. But yet, when John was in prison, death is imminent for him, predictable. God has chosen this time to reveal the future, what happened in the end time to him, so he can have a glimpse what happened. So he can be hopeful. Ultimately, everything will be gone. They give him the hope. What must soon take place will this will take place, and this is to give him the hope, the peace, and the strength that exactly what he need when he's going through、uh, his suffering. And for John, there wasn't any physical comfort for him. If you think physical comfort is part of、um, what God will do to take away,、um, but God didn't take away. The discomfort from him. God didn't give him the physical discomfort. He remains in jail. Now the jail cell is less than a half star accommodation. We know that, right? It's no comfort there. It was never good to be in jail, let alone die in jail. But yet God gave him something when he passed away. He can take. It's his faith. So when he die, we know everyone will be the same. We get decomposed. We lose everything in our life. But there's only one thing we try to make sure you won't lose is Jesus, and I think what that's what exactly God is doing to the Apostle John. He will die eventually, but God give him something. He can bring it to the grave with him. He's suffering for Jesus, but yet God give him the hope, the strength that he can carry on, stay on, stay calm, no fear, because he know he surely know Jesus is the Savior. 
And sometimes we can be the voice of God to tell people, if they believe in Jesus, you might be going through something really tough. But be the voice, like the elder. Tell people Jesus is the Savior. See, there's a lion of Judah there. He is the one we conquer. He is the one we bring ultimate victory. Point people to Jesus when they're in trouble time, so they may hang on to Jesus. And then, wherever they go, whenever they travel, whether it's tough, suffering, trouble, chaos, finance, health, whatever, God will be with them. And they know God is with them. And despite persecution, God is giving the Apostle John the faith and hope that he needs to power through. You know, for John, he will pass away, but he will be one of those people who go with hope, strength, and faith. Because he knows God's redemption plan will be executed. He might lose his life, but he will never lose Jesus. You know, the coming of life brings joy, excitement, and um, strength to family and friends. The passing of life can also bring strength, faith, and peace, and hope to people around us. Isn't life and death more dignified when John demonstrates his strength, his hope, and his faith in Jesus when he was alive, when he's on his way, knowingly he's going to end, isn't it? You might be wondering, I'm not sure if you have the same questions. Among the circle of Jesus, there are 12 disciples there. Why John has been selected to receive this revelation? Is there a reason why John received this revelation but not the rest of the 11? Well, my theory is John, the apostle, was the only apostle in the Bible who said he is the beloved disciple of Jesus. Jesus loves John, but he didn't take away the suffering, let him go. So he can see the revelation and go with hope. And I think that's wonderful. That's how God showed his love to the person that he really loved. And I think that speaks a lot about um, how we should read Revelation. The question for us this morning is, have you got Jesus? Is he secure in your heart? Is he secure in your life? And with him, almost nothing you cannot go through because he will give you the strength, the hope and faith that you need.